Hi, I'm Tim Kilduff, and this is Business Matters. Business Matters is HCAM's original series focusing not only on businesses in Hopkinton, but more importantly, the people who run and manage these businesses. Today I have with me Doris Hamburger, Vice President, Relationship Branch Manager, and Jim Paulus, President and CEO of Unibank. You know, it, it, this is a heck of a way to start a discussion, but I have to apologize. Uh, and I have to apologize because there is so much that we can talk about. Uh, so if you don't mind, I want to I want to sort of rush uh, it, it, because we want to talk about um, your individual backgrounds, but also want to spend a little time on uh, the choice, the process that Unibank went through to select Hopkinton as a, as a site. So let's just jump right in, if you don't mind. Okay, sure. Um, sure. Uh, you've had a wide range of banking activity. Can you can you capsulize that quickly? Because you worked for community banks, big banks now, uh, and and now a community bank in a, in a sense. So that that must have been an interesting interesting transition, and you've seen a lot. Certainly have. Um, I started in college working for a local community bank. Um, they, uh, upon graduation, they extended me an opportunity to go through a management training program, uh, which was fabulous. And uh, it was then that I decided that banking was what I wanted to do for a career. Um, we got bought by a big bank, and uh, I ended up leaving to go to Bank of Boston in 1987. Uh, stayed with one institution for 19 years, but four names. Um, bank of Boston turned into Bank Boston, turned into Fleet, and then Bank of America. And I was with Bank of America until 2005 when an opportunity came up to uh, get back to community banking, which is something that I really loved. So I joined Unibank at the end of 2005 and took over as CEO in 2009. Doris? Yes, Tim. Hop, born and raised in Hopkinton. That's Absolutely. a big deal, by the way. It is a big deal. <laughs> um, Hopkinton is near and dear to my heart. Um, I did work for a financial institution in Hopkinton back in the early 80s, um, the Home National Bank next to Koala Supermarket, and um, left for a little bit to raise a family, but now I'm back, um, and I've been with Unibank for 20 years. Was this a plan? The to, to have, have someone born and raised at Hopkinton? <laughs> well, certainly she was our first choice, there's no <laughs> question about it, and, and that factored into it, Tim. <laughs> Doris, how, how big was Hopkinton when you uh, graduated from high school? Uh, the population, Tim, was between five and 6,000. Um, 16,000 now? 16,000 now, so certainly there's been a lot of growth over the years. Um, I was a resident of Hopkinton for 30 years. I've been since living in the next town over. Um, but this, it's good growth, I think, from what yeah, I can I think, see. I think it's right. It, causes, it, it presents some challenges, uh, change, uh, that sort of thing. And I think that's uh, one of the exciting parts about Unibank coming into Hopkinton. It, it, it brings another entity in, and it's, uh, it's going to have an impact on, I would think, on the, on the financial community uh, within Hopkinton, won't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this, uh, this is our third uh, new market in the last three years. Uh, we entered Worcester in 2012, grafted in 2013, and uh, now here in Hopkinton. Uh, it's part of a strategic plan to grow our geographic footprint, and when we go into new communities, uh, as we do our existing communities, very community-focused, um, providing solutions for both businesses and consumers uh, that fit their needs. Um, provide outstanding service and give back to the community, uh, whether it's volunteerism or significant contributions to local charities. Uh, we are very, very committed to serve the communities that we're in and make them better places to live and work. How did you uh, want to step back a little bit uh, and talk about your uh, your respective educational backgrounds? Because one of the things we, we hope to do through this program is to talk about how people got to where they where they ended up. Uh, Hopkins and high school, and then where? <laughs> well, I, I started my education um, and worked at a financial institution in Framingham. Um, my interest in finance and my passion for customer service, I guess, is what led me to where I am today, 20 years later at Unibank. Um, so after focusing on my three sons' education, Unibank gave me the opportunity with their um, partnership with a college in Boston to uh, earn my degree most recently. Wow. So um, I have attended other financial uh, 
studies programs, the financial studies program at Babson. Um, so a little bit along the way, but most recently I earned my degree thanks to Unibank support. Wow. Jim, how about you? Nichols College graduate, uh, bachelor's uh, in business, uh, and then attended uh, Clark University's Graduate School of Management for several years. Uh, settled down, had children, didn't finish my qualifications for the degree, uh, but it was a fabulous experience. The, um, the transition now, let's, the, 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 from um, community bank to ultimately uh, a big bank, um, you've seen a lot. A lot of experience around mergers, acquisitions, all of that sort of stuff. How does that fit into now uh, what you're doing in, uh, at Unibank? Um, I've been through both sides of uh, acquisitions uh, in the banking industry several times. Um, and uh, the, the, uh, at the end of my time with Bank of America, uh, it, was, it was clear to me that for me to really get enjoyment out of my career, go to work every day excited. Um, be part of something really special in the communities that we serve. Uh, it was getting back to community banking. Um, and it was probably the best career decision I've made, um, getting, uh, taking the position with Unibank. Um, it's about people, it's about uh, developing your teams, it's about doing the right thing, it's about uh, making sure that uh, you're uh, taking care of your customers and you're providing product and service uh, as they need, not as you desire to give it to them. Um, and the big banks, in my opinion, just don't get that. I think banking has changed a lot over the years, I've seen as well. Um, you know, when I first started in banking, we didn't have debit cards or ATM <laughs> machines. And <laughs> if you wanted money for the weekend, you had to cash a check on Friday. So I think Jim is correct in saying you have to find um, your customers' needs delivery channels. Um, we have older customers that come in the bank that come in every day just to see us. And then we have the younger generation that would just as soon um, take a picture of their check and have it deposited to their account because they can't be bothered to come into the bank. So I think it's a challenge trying to find the right delivery channel for the, the right customer uh, to meet their banking needs. You must have been in part driven by this uh need for hands-on, I, I, would, I would think, and even in terms of managing your people. If you're with a, a, a large institution, you, I don't think you, you don't get that, do you? No, not at all. Um, the uh, larger institutions tend to be organized by function, and um, being able to lead a market like Central Massachusetts, which, which was my role when I left, uh, was very difficult because the leaders in the market didn't report directly to me. Uh, my job was to um, pull people together and uh, get consensus around initiatives, but uh, running a community bank, um, surrounding yourself with great people, uh, it, very rewarding. And you've had that from day one, really, in your... Uh, uh, absolutely. Working for this type of financial institution um, has allowed me to grow um, in my career. Um, I go to work every day, and um, I'm not sure a lot of people can say um, I love to go to work every day. I just love the atmosphere that Unibank provides for their customers and their employees, um, encouraging development. Um, so all I've known is a community bank, but um, we have new people coming in that have worked for the bigger banks, and um, they're bringing new ideas, but it's a whole different culture. Let's talk about selection, if you, if you will. And I, I'm also interested in, uh, in your thoughts about uh, I was reading the, the, the Worcester uh, Business Journal the other day, and, uh, in, and there was a, a, an article that talked about the, the uh, high-end communities in uh, central Massachusetts. Hopkinton was one of them. I'm not so sure the people in Hopkinton think they're part of central Massachusetts. <laughs> I'm interested in your That's reaction, on, on, on your reaction and it, it, your thoughts on that. Um, I, I didn't see the article, Tim, but uh, it, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, the majority of the uh, people in Hopkinton don't feel themselves as part of uh, central Massachusetts. I think, you know, um, we believe many of them are working in, in inside of 128 uh, and commuting, uh, so they probably uh, associate themselves more with uh, Eastern Mass than, than Central Mass. Um, for us, our, in our expansion to this community, um, it's a logical extension of uh, our current footprint. Right. Um, and uh, we do extensive surveys, and uh, several years ago did a survey in Hopkinton, given its population growth rate, 
the median income, uh, the number of banks in the community, the type of banks in the community. Uh, Hopkinton rated number one in terms of the, the, the next community we should put a branch in, and we are thrilled to be here. Did you look at other, uh, were there other competing communities? We looked, we asked them to look at all of Worcester County and uh, all the communities uh, up and down 495. 495. Uh, we view our market as 146 to 495, the Rhode Island to uh, uh, New Hampshire border, that Central Mass Corridor. And this, this is very important to us. And as, uh, uh, as we were talking earlier uh, with branches in Upton and Milford, this is a, a nice fit for us in terms of those three communities. Do you play a role in that selection process? You had to, you had to do some inside lobbying. <laughs> I did, I did. Um, when we began searching for a new location, um, that was, of course, my number one priority, and I put my name in right away um, <laughs> to be working in such a great community and be back here and um, reconnecting with some uh, businesses and people that I connected with back then and just uh, meeting new people. And everyone I've met here so far has been so welcoming. Challenges, though. So. Coming into a new now you, you, you have a, you have an edge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we we, yeah. we would agree. Um, you've got someone who's born and raised here and, and has paid attention to the community over the years. But what are the challenges? You're coming into a brand new community again, Metro West as opposed to the, 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 to Central Massachusetts. Yep. Um, I'm pleased to say that we already do business with a lot of consumers and a lot of businesses in the town of Hockington. Um, so it, while it's an, a new entry in terms of a physical presence, we already do business with a, a number of people here. Um, the, uh, the, the challenges for us um, really are just to continue to uh, deliver the way we deliver, and I think Doris might want to explain our delivery model, um, and um, get involved in the community help make this a better community in any way we can through volunteerism and, and, and charitable contributions, um, and deliver something different and deliver it in a different way. And I think the delivery model is, is mm -hmm. one way that distinguishes us from the other banks. What's the difference? Of, well, of course, um, you have to differ differentiate yourself from the bank across the street as far as um, everyone prides themselves in excellent customer service. Um, we have a new bank model, um, so when you walk into our branch, there is not the traditional teller line. You'll be greeted by a banker who can uh, meet your every financial need, whether it be to cash a check or to apply for a loan. So you have your own personal banker when you walk into Unibank in Hopkinton. Um, we have a Unibank cafe. You can sit, have a cup of coffee, um, watch TV, make some cell phone calls. Um, well, your banker does your uh, banking business for you. Um, so it's not the traditional model. Um, Doesn't sound like it. No, it it's isn't. And, uh, All the newest technology, um, if you need help um, signing into your online banking or learning how to download your um, Unibank app onto your, your iPhone, um, we're there to help you with whatever you need. Local decision making too, I think, is a big difference. Um, what does that What does that mean? Local decision making. When you When you apply for a loan at Unibank, um, local people are looking um, and making decisions, as opposed to um, sending it, sometimes even out of the country, mm -hmm. um, yeah. to do the underwriting. And I think the speed at which we can we can re respond Absolutely. is uh, is outstanding. Um, we don't get caught up in boards and committees and um, an approval process that's really cumbersome. Um, the, uh, the relationship bankers or the commercial bankers will uh, come in with an opportunity and in a matter of days we've decisioned it and already told them to, to go, go ahead and provide the commitment or uh, the, the uh, product to the particular client. Where are the, where are the pressure points on you? Where, where, do you sp where do you spend your time? Uh, right now, compliance and regulatory. Yeah. Uh, it's an industry dynamic that uh, we, we have to deal with, uh, but uh, quite honestly, it's not fun. Um, so uh, making sure that we have the resources uh, and that the entire institution is focused on uh, making sure that we remain compliant uh, with the particularly consumer protection laws. Um, the, uh, people development, uh, very important mm -hmm. for us. Um, you know, at a time 10 years ago, the larger banks all had their own training programs, and they've done away with them. 
and the uh, smaller banks could go in and, and, and take their uh, trained individuals and bring them on staff. But um, so we've decided we've developed our own leadership development program, uh, s several layers, uh, starting with entry level uh, to senior level, um, and investing in people and providing them a roadmap to continued progress and opportunity in the company is very important. And lastly, uh, surrounding yourself with good people. Uh, we are only as good as the entire team is, and we've got an outstanding 260 some odd employees. Wow. I was going to ask you how many employees. Yeah. How, what will your day look like? Um, we have a staff uh, right now of, of five. Um, part of my um, job responsibility, which um, I'm very passionate about, is getting involved in community events and um, issues that are important to the Hopkins community. Um, so hopefully I will be out and about doing things of that nature as well as coaching my staff. Um, but primarily business development and things of that nature. How, how, how do you stay involved in uh, the public affairs arena? You know, the, not just the community piece, but the, the government, local, state, federal. How do you stay? How do you stay current? Because it's got to be, uh, it's got to be a sort of a continuous process, I would think. Oh, absolutely. And in our case, um, you know, we uh, we have a business unit that does business with 300 of the municipalities in Massachusetts. We have 85 uh, percent of the municipalities do business with Unibank. Uh, so staying involved. Say that again. Say, I, 80, 85 percent of the communities in Massachusetts do business with Unibank. And it's a, it's a very critical business for us, as are our consumer and commercial businesses. But um, uh, as a result of that, I stay pretty f highly focused uh, on um, political and legislative, legislative actions that could impact that business. What do you attribute to the, 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 the 300 communities, 300 plus communities? What do you attribute that to? We have uh, a dedicated team focused on government, uh, the government space. Uh, back about 15, 12, 13 years ago, we developed a payments product that allows residents in communities in Massachusetts to pay their taxes online, apply for a marriage license, excise tax, uh, real estate tax. Um, and because we were f first, um, or one of the first, we were able to bring uh, over 300 of the municipalities into the bank on that payments product serv uh, payment service. And with that comes a full deposit relationship with cash management and, and other services. Wow. Would not have thought that. We do have subsidiaries that um, diversify our revenue stream, if you will. Um, Sterling we Associates is our um, lending for um, boats and aircraft. We have uh, this, uh, three subsidiaries. The, uh, the payments product I referenced in the government banking, which is part of the bank, um, was so successful in Massachusetts that we're now licensing that product to banks around the country through one of our subsidiaries. And we've got five banks currently licensed, uh, two in New England and, uh, and three uh, in the Midwest. Um, is, it fair to, is it fair to say that, um, that d d you have some uh, entrepreneurial um, skills? I mean, you, you just don't sit there and, you know, it, it ain't all that simple, is it? No, it <laughs> isn't. But uh, as an institution, I would say we are very entrepreneurial. Um, and always looking for an opportunity not only to, to grow the bank and, as Dora said, diversify our revenue stream, um, but also provide solutions to whatever client base. And in, in this particular subsidies case, we're providing other banks an opportunity to do what we did in Massachusetts. Uh, the subsidiary Sterling uh, Associates originates boat and airplane loans around the country. Um, that's a fee-based business, as is the first one. And then to, to complement our government banking business, um, we have a fiscal advisory group that is also a subsidiary, and they advise cities and towns on their school building projects or uh, uh, purchasing a fire engine and provide um, uh, bond uh, 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 advisory services. Twelve months from now, you're gonna be, you'll open soon um, in Hopkinton. Uh, what are the, the uh, how are you going to measure your success? What, what, how do you define success? Well, first of all, uh, as, as we did in the, the other new communities we expanded to recently, um, first and foremost for me it's the buzz factor and the response from the, the community and the clients about our delivery model and our commitment to, to the region. Um, th that's, that's usually first. Um, 
Uh, but we, we have a P&L for every branch. Uh, we measure uh, based on loans that we can generate out of a new location, as well as deposits that we uh, bring into the, into the bank. The, um, the process that you went through, you had to deal with a number of entities in the community. Um, and we, we struggle. There's dynamics going on in, in, in Hockenden now relative to, to, uh, to local issues, whether a, a, a change should come in, that sort of thing, which I think ultimately will be, will be straightened out. But um, what's been your experience uh, working with officials in Hopkinton? It's been a relatively easy process. Um, I did go to your meeting um, last week, the chamber meeting on your vision for downtown Hopkinton, and you mentioned the fact that um, you have the 2020 committee, and yes. right now 17% of businesses um, make up your tax revenue stream, and you're hoping to bring that up to 20. Um, I, this will be my third branch that I've opened at Unibank, and my fifth branch that I'm managing. So it's all relevant. I mean, it's signage seems to be always a hot spot when you go into a new town. Uh, but the town officials have been very welcoming um, to us so far. Yeah. From where you sit, the same thing? Yeah, I mean, I haven't been uh, as close to it as Doris and uh, other members of our team. But uh, yeah, we have, uh, we've been very pleased with your interactions with the uh, government officials here and the, the boards and committees that we have to seek approvals from. Uh, it's, it's been relatively smooth. Going forward, again, um, I get a sense you have your own P&L. We, we, we get that. But how did, what's your strategy, strategy in terms of immersing yourself in a, in a community? This is a pretty dynamic place. Most people think, um, there are a lot of people who think this is the hottest community in Metro West uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to live in. There's a lot, a lot of interest in living here. But um, how do you begin to narrow that and, uh, and get a focus on how you want to enter into the community? Uh, before um, we uh, put a hammer to a nail in, in the new branch, uh, we started uh, reaching out to centers of influence in the community. Um, people who have been here a long time, whether it be uh, living here or uh, their business uh, here. Um, w where are the organizations, who are the organizations that we need to be a part of? Uh, who are the, uh, the leaders in the community that uh, we need to get to know? Uh, and our people will get involved. It, uh, it won't simply be a photo with us with a big check giving somebody five thousand dollars I mean, we get we get fully Good. involved and in it, the community it isn't serve. all about the donations either I mean we have uh, volunteer work within the community as well get involved in the food local food pantries and the senior centers and we have a number of different events planned um, for our grand opening and last year alone, uh, a bank our size, this is a very big number, uh, it was over half a million dollars in charitable giving to the communities that we're in. Uh, but as important to me, 10,000 volunteer hours by our people, uh, whether it be um, uh, food pantries mm -hmm. and, and uh, making meals uh, for those in need, or the United Way, or a host of other organizations, our people are involved. Well, I would think people are lining up. Are they knocking on your door yeah. yet? No, yeah, I did have an opportunity to visit um, Mary Ellen Grady at the Hopkins Middle School. I'll be up there to present her check for the um, courtyard project uh, that they have going on. You know, I got to tell you that was a that uh, I ought to congratulate you on that. That's a that's a very smart move. This is this is a, a really a grassroots effort. Uh, I don't think there's any public money involved in that project. They've right. raised it all. And they are so passionate. Oh. Um, oh. She told me one of the students actually presented her with her birthday checks that she had gotten for her birthday, one of the students, um, because the students are passionate about it too. Um, so that's a wonderful opportunity to get involved with um, Mary Ellen. And we talked about financial literacy programs that I'm very passionate about as well. So we'll be connecting there. Um, Jim, that's a pretty good. Uh, that's a pretty good start. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it that, is. That's that's really a grassroots that gets down into in, into the community. Yeah, it is. Uh, we, we have uh, a number of organizations that uh, we'll be announcing at our grand opening later this month, um, at the grand opening ceremony uh, later this month. Uh, that that will show our commitment to the community. Well, I w I'll tell you this. I th I. Th 
I think there is a tremendous opportunity for, um, for the two of you and in your institution uh, to bring a different set of eyes um, on not just, uh, not just public affairs issues, but sort of um, a, a, you've got a different experience base. And um, I would hope, I would hope that, uh, and it sounds like you will, uh, that you'll make yourselves available uh, to bring that experience base, uh, and base in here. And as I told you uh, when we uh, started this a few minutes ago, uh, that we couldn't put all this into 30 minutes. So my hope is, um, as you enter into the community, if there are economic issues, for example, uh, regional economic issues, that we could have you back in, uh, in uh, get your input uh, input on those particular issues. So thank you very much for absolutely. We would love to do that, Tim. Well, thank you for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Another. Um, Another great opportunity to um, uh, bring uh, people with uh, a wide variety of skill sets uh, into uh, this uh, very hot Ventral West community. <laughs> um, and we think both uh, Unibank and, uh, and Hopkinton will benefit uh, from this new relationship. So thanks, Jim. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Doris. Thank you, Tim. Look forward to talking to you again. Hi, I'm Tim Kilda, and this is Business Matters. I think we got to talk a little bit about the history. I mean, uh, you were born into something pretty special, weren't you? Yeah. The shop is a, is a safe haven for a lot of people, young and old. Business Matters is HCAM's show focusing not only on businesses in Hopkinton, but more importantly, the people who run and manage those businesses. followed by an open mic with people who come from near and far. Think Jackson Pollock in monochromatic brown. When the owls finally roost and small creatures can safely sleep, I can sleep too. I sang with the master and danced for eternity in the light of the moon.